These are books about America, its history, its geography, and its heroes. But it takes a big book like this one to tell the story of American folklore. The tall tales about men doing big things in a big country. Men like Captain Stormalong, Joe McGarrick, John Henry, Pecos Bill, and the fellow who towers above them all, Paul Bunyan. North America was a great big land with a great big job to be done. A job that needed a great big man, Paul Bunyan was the one. Carol McNabb, lumberjack by trade. Reckon I was the first person in our part of the country to see Paul Bunyan. Our town was cut right out of the big timber on the coast of Maine. Should have known something unusual was going to happen that night. A sou'easter come up and the wind howled so thought it was going to blow our town right off the map. Come daylight, I took a look to see what was left of the place. I spotted an odd-looking craft on the beach. That's where the howling was coming from. Hey, Ma, what in the world do you suppose that is? The howling roused the whole town, and everybody rushed down to investigate. Never saw anything like it. Looks like a big cradle. Now be careful, Cal. <laughs> Well, I'll be hornswoggled. A baby! And it's a whopper! The whole town adopted him and named him Paul Bunyan. Everybody pitched in to supply his needs. They held sewing bees and knitting circles to make his clothes. Feeding him wasn't any small job either. I led the singing to put him to sleep at night. One, two. Paul was big enough to go to school. He was a bright boy and never tardy. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, children. Now everyone be seated. Will the first pupil to work the sum of five plus two rise and show the answer? <laughs> For heaven's sake, don't raise the roof. was a big event in our town. We had our tree in the town square on account of Paul. I handed out the presents. You kids ready? Well, here's something for Johnny, for Susan, and for Paul. Here's a gift from the whole town. A double-bladed axe. Paul took to cutting timber like a duck takes to water. 
long, our sawmills had enough timber to last a lifetime. That opened plenty of new farmland. And our town grew so fast it got to crowd and fall. So one morning, we weren't too surprised to find a note in the square. And plenty of room. Love, Paul. P.S. I'll write soon. We're gonna miss that boy. I am Chris Crosshall, straw boss of a logging crew in the Middle West. I will never forget the first time I saw Paul Bunyan. I was chopping trees one morning. I looked up, and there stood the biggest man I ever saw. With my double blade axe and my hobnail boots, I go where the timber's tall. When there's work to be done, don't mess around. Just sing right out for Paul. Hey, Paul! I'm coming, boys! Paul Bunyan! Paul Bunyan! He's 63 axe handle. that country so quick, farmers had their crops in the first week. So Paul headed west for the big woods and more room. He hadn't gone far when he ran into the worst blizzard this country ever saw. It was so cold, even the snow was blue. When Paul built a fire, the flames froze. While he was building a second fire to melt the first one, he heard a low moo. He looked all around, and there, under a fog bank, he found a big ox, frozen just as blue as the snow. was mighty grateful for being rescued. They hit it right off and became real pals. Paul named him Babe. The two of them headed west, but the storm got worse, and they got so lost. Well, sir, they left lots of tracks behind them, and come spring, those tracks filled with water, and this area became known as the land of 10,000 lakes. 